Did you know that leatherback sea turtles are the world's fourth largest reptile and weigh over 2,000 pounds? That's more than an adult gorilla, lion, and horse put together. Oh, or did you know that the green sea turtle shell colors change over time? Or that the loggerhead sea turtle, like most humans, only mate after they turn 33? Hi, I'm Alice Apostolakos from Troop 352, and today it's time to learn about sea turtles, and why so many of them are dying, and why we need to save them. Sea turtles play a very important role in the fan-favorite background and home for Finding Nemo and pretty much every other coastal marine animal, coral reefs. Coral reefs are often referred to as the rainforest of the seas because of the variety of creatures that live and thrive there. They're expansive marine ecosystems that are characterized by reef-building corals, built up by tiny organisms called polyps, that act as one, making coral an actual animal. It's like all the cells in your body coming together to make you, you. Like your community, different members of the coral reef interact with each other to sustain balance. The fancy word for this is called the food web, and the fancy definition is a system of interlocking and interdependent food chains where each organism plays a part. This is where sea turtles are integral. They are a keystone species, a species that an ecosystem heavily depends on, and if removed, would completely change it. To say lightly, there are a lot of things that sea turtles do. For example, they're one of the few animals that eat seagrass, or more commonly referred to as turtle grass. This grass, like a lawn, must be trimmed regularly to stay healthy. The thing about seagrass is that it's a primary producer, the foundation for energy that every other species and consumer needs to survive. With the population of sea turtles shrinking, seagrass has in turn shrunk, along with the many populations of fish, shellfish, and crustaceans that rely on it, and that affects humans too. No seagrass, no fish for us to eat. Another aspect in the coral reef food web are the species that keep other species populations in check. Sea turtles keep the populations of jellyfish, sea sponges, and seagrass all in check. If this didn't happen, it would wreak havoc on the ecosystem. Sea sponges overgrow and suffocate the coral, seagrass dies and fish relying on it die, and unchecked jellyfish populations could hunt larval fish, the fish humans also eat, to extinction. Sea turtle nesting is also way more influential than you may think. With beaches naturally having little to no fertile soil, the ground must find nutrients from other sources, one being turtle eggs. Female turtles can lay up to 100 eggs at a time. Sadly, not all eggs hatch, not all hatchlings survive, and these leftover eggs and hatchlings are important food sources for birds, fish, and even mammals while providing nutrients for dune vegetation. With less turtles to lay eggs, erosion and beaches increase and other populations suffer. Lastly, sea turtles play a big role in human culture. Sea turtles symbolize Mother Earth, good health, and a long life in many coastal indigenous tribes, including Hawaii. And can you imagine classic movies like Finding Nemo, Moana, Lilo and Stitch without sea turtles being a part of the environment? Many organizations and regions also rely on sea turtles for tourism, like us in South- Hey, it's me! Okay, so now it's time to learn about Crush. This is Crush. Crush was a green sea turtle swimming in the Atlantic Ocean. He dwelled around the Caribbean coral reefs and was loved among his aquatic friends and family. However, Crush was recently found tragically dead along the local shoreline. An initial report confirmed microplastics within his body and multiple pieces of debris on him. Oh, to further understand how Crush died, we're going to have to perform a necropsy. Oh my! As we can see here, Crush has multiple pieces of plastic within his body. Here, take a closer look. Oh, well, his lungs have plastic in them, and it seems he got a straw stuck in his trachea. In his heart, there are microplastics, and in his digestive system, there's a plastic bag and a gum wrapping. Okay, so here's where you're going to have a hand in. We need to figure out exactly what harmed Crush. 
pretend you're a medical examiner. Let's look at Crush's body and the environment surrounding him. Can you identify all of the pieces of plastic in and outside of his body that could have harmed him? Don't be shy. Take a piece of paper and list as many as you can. All done? Okay, so let's look at the final report from the local marine department. A final report reveals that Crush suffered multiple injuries from plastic waste. Microplastics were found in his digestive tract, lungs, and trachea. He had a plastic six-pack ring around his neck that restricted airflow, along with multiple pieces of fishing net entangling his fins. There was evidence of a mylar balloon blocking his intestines, and bits of straw were caught in his lungs. After the necropsy, his body was cleaned and sent to his loved ones. Condolences are sent to his family and friends. Rest in peace, Crush. So, the story of Crush is sad. But what's even sadder is that this actually happens to thousands of turtles each year. In fact, leatherback sea turtle populations have dropped nearly 95% since the 1980s, Hawksbill populations not found anywhere in large slash stable numbers anymore, and the Olive Ridley population has dropped more than 80% since 1967. The biggest killer of turtle populations is human activity. These are all things like marine debris and plastic pollution, lost fishing nets and gear, illegal poaching and hunting, lower water quality to algae blooms, light pollution, coastal erosion, invasive species, and most expansively, climate change. Okay, that's a lot. Let's start with the most known and wide-ranging effect, climate change. Climate change is the change of global climate patterns because of the increased levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. Basically, with more CO2 in the air released by fossil fuels, factories and cities, the atmosphere and the ocean absorb it and get warmer. This is a problem for many reasons. Sea levels and surface temperatures rise, ice sheets melt, weather gets more extreme, and with ocean acidification, coral reefs start to die. Actually, scientists predict that by 2050, the oceans will be too warm for coral reefs to survive, leading to the death of thousands of marine species. And it doesn't end there. Climate change has also skewed the ratio of females to males within sea turtles' populations. You see, the sex of turtle eggs are determined directly by temperature. Female eggs grow in warmer temperatures, and male eggs grow in colder temperatures. And in normal circumstances, this is determined by how deep the nest is. However, with raised temperatures due to climate change, more females than males are being born. This causes major problems for reproduction. Without males, female sea turtles cannot reproduce their offspring and endangered sea turtle species face an uphill battle trying to recover their population. So this is where it gets depressing. The ocean has become an increasingly dangerous place for organisms to live in. With almost 8 million tons of plastic entering the ocean every year, including countless little things called microplastics, thousands of animals are affected. An average of 1,000 turtles die each year from being entangled in plastic waste, including fishing nets, soda can wrappers, and plastic bags mistaken as jellyfish. Just one piece of ingested plastic has a 22% chance of killing a turtle. They ingest microplastics in the ocean and in their food, which block their digestive system or straws stuck inside their noses and tracheas and block airflow. With garbage patches dispersed around the world, made up of trash, debris, fishing gear, and single-use plastics, the ocean has become more than 50% microplastic. It is predicted soon that there will be more plastic than living things in the ocean. So, with all that said, there is still hope to help save sea turtles and save our precious oceans. 
In fact, there are ways in your own life that you can help contribute to marine conservation. Here are some ways. Firstly, be conservative of how much plastic you use. I know, plastic is convenient for many reasons. However, the sea turtles ingesting it could do without. Replacing single-use plastics with reusable ones, like paper and cloth bags and straws, bar soaps, wood toothbrushes, and glass containers are common alternatives. It's also beneficial to buy a reusable mask instead of single-use ones. Masks made of high-quality cloth and reusable gloves can still protect you from COVID-19, and you can have a cool design on them. Number two. Get involved in local cleanups and conservation efforts in sea turtle habitat. Cleaning up beaches, shores, and other nesting sites not only stops the trash from entering the ocean, but it also creates a safer place for baby sea turtles to survive. Deering Estate actually offers many monthly and annual cleanups that one can attend and contribute to the cause. Number three, find out where and how exactly your seafood products originate from. Many fishing practices are harmful to sea turtles, like leaving fishing nets in the sea, selling turtle eggs, or poaching their shells. Learning about your seafood information ne network will help you and the turtles. Number four, steer clear of sea turtles in the wild. They often get hurt by getting caught in the motors of boats and or yachts. Make sure you keep at least a 50 feet distance away from them and any school of fish they may be following. Number five, when leaving the beach, you should leave it better than you found it. I know, we all hear it, but leaving chairs, towels, trash, shoes, sandcastles, holes, all that, all make extra obstacles for baby sea turtles trying to make it to the shore. Leaving the beach smooth and clear of trash provides them with a fighting chance. Support causes that focus on sea turtle, sea turtle conservation. Organizations like Sea Turtle, WWF, Loggerhead Marine Life Center, the Turtle Hospital, and the Sea Turtle Conservation Program in Miami-Dade are all fighting for sea turtles to survive. Support them by visiting, donating, signing petitions, and becoming an active advocate. Last but not least, bringing awareness to other people. Most people are unaware of just how difficult the circumstances have become for many sea turtle populations. Informing your community is an invaluable asset, especially in South Florida. Contacting your local and state elective officials and voicing your concerns can make a real change. So, in this video course, you learned about sea turtles, the ocean and their marine environment, and why it's important to be aware and protect them. Okay, so now it's time to put that knowledge to the test. Do you see this turtle diagram? Can you fill in the blank of the organ that corresponds to the internal anatomy of the turtle? Next, what are three things that make sea turtles important for a coral reef survival? And lastly, can you identify three ways you can help sea turtles in your own life? All right, you got that all down? Great job. You're on your way to help better the environment and protect sea turtles all around the globe. Be sure to apply all the things you identified in sea turtle conservation in your real life. Buying reusable items, attending beach cleanups, donating causes, etc. Cheers to a better future for Crush and all sea turtles.